This is not your typical road map. Yes, there are major highways and side roads that turn off the main ones, but this map shows the path of all major internet highways. These internet highways, or interregional routes, are the major backbones of the global internet. And you can see one point of each route is located in the United States, which is why some say the internet center of gravity is in the U.S. Yet there are many global organizations that share internet governance. Over the past two decades, the decision-making organizations in charge of the internet have grown in number and an in international makeup. The internet has been and continues to be a resource that operates best with multi-stakeholder cooperation and as little centralized control as possible. But as the internet and its capability expands, so does the debate about control and who, if anybody, should have it. This discussion is nearly impossible to resolve because bringing continuous input together from so many sources in so many places is incredibly complex. This power center topic is a delicate one because most of the initial resources of the internet were invented and developed in the United States. Much of the control over the administration of architecture and the central elements of the internet are still retained by the U.S. Many of the root servers key to the internet are located in the U.S. But because the internet has become a global phenomenon of significant impact, there are many who would like to see the U.S. relinquish some of its original control, especially considering many of the existing governing organizations are international. The time has come to start talking about this. In fact, to even understand what are critical internet resources. Uh, is it the domain name system? Is it the address space? Is it the root server system? Uh, is it some, the, the way the protocols are developed? My definition that includes obviously names, the domain names that we talked about, the country code domain names and the top level generic domain names. The management of those is part of the, part of the system. The other portion are the addresses. You have to have an address so that the system knows where you are on the internet. That's like the equivalent of your telephone number in a very rough analogy to the telephone system. Uh, the other one, another one, is, uh, is the routing tables. The system has to know how to find you and the systems that the ISPs operate to send traffic around the internet. All those are critical internet resources. Critical internet resources relates to infrastructure. That includes such things as the domain name system and IP addresses, the root server system, technical standards, telecommunications, and innovative and convergent technologies. With many hot topics for discussion, critical internet resources is at the top of the agenda here at the second annual Internet Governance Forum in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. IGF is a forum facilitated by the United Nations to allow people of the world to come together to discuss the future of the internet along with their expectations and fears of this developing technology. This is a place where people from civil society, business, government and non-governmental organizations can learn from one another make global connections and share information that will shape the way the internet expands. So who should be in charge of the internet and how should decisions be made? But it seems to me very critical that governments understand that they do have a role to play well beyond the ICANN structure. We can still use ICANN-like uh, means for those discussions. This multi-stakeholder model is another element of the discussion this week. And it's worked out, I think, pretty well. What we did do, though, was spend quite a bit of our time over the last 20 years systematically working to get government out of the business of running the Internet. And to, to this point, there's very little that's left that has any direct government tie. It's mainly the private sector that is operating the Internet today. Uh, I think uh, it's, if anything, surprising that it works as well as it does. How did this power struggle begin? It all started with ARPANET, the first rudimentary internet network in the 1960s. It developed under a U.S. Defense Department communications initiative, and by 1973, the entire network connected just 30 institutions. See how the internet has expanded in less than 40 years? In fact, currently 1.1 billion people in the world use the internet, and by 2011, 22% of the world's population, or nearly 1.6 billion people, will be online. People other than these computer specialists had no understanding of what was going on. And slowly that understanding spread. And as long as it was essentially a tool which was connecting research institutions together, this process where you know, scientists worked out uh, a protocol of exchange, etc. worked. 
The internet today is very different from that old ARPANET. I think the internet of today is different from uh, the internet of the 1990s or even uh, in 2002 when the whole discussion in the United Nations started. Today issues are totally different. It's now Web 2.0, it's uh, all the Facebooks and MySpace and YouTubes. And in so far, some of the more critical issues of the past you know, are now surrounded by even more critical issues. The Internet Society, a nonprofit charitable organization, was founded in 1992, mostly by Internet engineers and scientists. They wanted people from all over the world to come together in harmony to plan the future of the greatest communications network. The Society's motto is to assure the open development, evolution, and use of the Internet for the benefit of all people throughout the world. The Internet Society helps promote the founding principles of the Internet as an open network built for innovation, creativity, and economic opportunity. Its subgroups include the Internet Architecture Board and the Internet Engineering Task Force, the people who work to continue to develop the Internet. In 1998, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, also known as ICANN, was created. ICANN is a nonprofit agency assigned to manage the domain names and IP addresses. It holds public meetings and encourages public participation in its processes. ICANN is uh, the result of the internet community coming together and saying we need to organize how we run the internet. And so it consists of the uh, various components that make the internet work. It's tough to get people from varied cultural, social, and economic backgrounds to come together and make decisions as complex and multi-layered as those now being discussed in regard to the revolutionary communications tool we call the Internet. That we today have to see a lot of the controversies of the past in this new environment. And the good thing with the Internet Governance Forum is that this is a space for discussion because nobody has an answer. We are searching for answers. The annual Internet Governance Forum is providing people from all walks of life, from many parts of the world, the chance to get together and talk things over. The major themes of discussion for IGF in Rio are security, diversity, openness, and access. There have been many people in the world community who wish to address the issues tied to the locations and operations of the Internet infrastructure. These are critical Internet resources. There are those who say this type of discussion can become a pointless and possibly negative power struggle. Part of the principle of ICANN and, and many of us who've been involved in other organizations is to make sure that no one person or no one company or no one country or no organization is going to actually control the internet. The, the benefit of the internet is that it's distributed and most of the power occurs at the edges. Any single person can join up the Internet Society's official position is that IGF should focus on expanding access to the Internet, sharing ideas for best practices and expertise with others, and knowledge sharing and bridge building between civil society, government, business, and non-governmental organizations, avoiding political arguments. One thing is certain, for the Internet to continue to be stable and to grow, the countries of the world must work together. From Rio de Janeiro, I'm Ann Nicholson, reporting for Imagining the Internet in Elon University School of Communications.